Hey guys, David Miller here with Gemini BIM. In today's video, I'd like to show you how to create a symbol offset parameters for electrical fixtures so that you can offset the symbology from the 3D model in the horizontal and vertical planes. This is coming from a recent question posted to the Autodesk forum where this user was asking that um, question. Um, he's in a scenario where he modeled all his electrical devices and fixtures accurately, but you can see they're in close proximity. And then the result is that within the uh, view, 2D plan views um, for documentation, that you end up with all of your annotations uh, basically on top of each other. So what I want to show is how to create um, a method where you can offset the symbology to create a, you know, clear documentation. And an answer was provided and both of these solutions uh, do work. Um, but our method at Gemini BIM adds a little bit of additional functionality and um, it's worked well for us. So I just wanted to demonstrate um, how we do it here at Gemini BIM. So all I have is the default um, Imperial Systems template open in Revit I'm on, on a typical power plan. And I'll go ahead and draw a wall so we have something to host our family to. And I'm just using an out of the box uh, electrical fixture. That's default with Revit. And we'll go ahead and edit this family. And then let's find the annotation family. And we'll go ahead and edit this family. So within the annotation, generic annotation family, let's go ahead and turn on the dimensions and reference lines. And then for this example, we don't need these dimensions. And I'm going to go ahead and unconstrain it from the reference plane. And right now we're just going to move this out of the way. So let's go ahead and create the skeleton um, that we're going to use to move our um, annotation symbol. So to do that, we need to create a couple reference planes. And um, I'm going to change our reference plane real fast and then create another reference plane. So the reason why I changed the uh, our reference plane is, is pretty cool so that if uh, this moves, you'll notice that this moves with it. So it just all kind of stays to together. So this reference line is associated to the plane of this reference line. So if I move, you know, it moves with it. A little tip. So let's go ahead and create some parameters to control all of this. So um, what this reference uh, line and parameter is for is our um, method to allow a negative um, offset for our symbology. And I'll show you how that will work in the project or in the family here in a second. And it's gonna be an instance and anything that has a formula just to create a clear separation, I'm gonna place under the constraints just so graphically you guys can see what I'm doing. Then we're gonna go from here to this one. We're going to add another instance, give it a name. And again, since this is going to have a formula, I'm going to move it to the constraints. And then finally, one more for our vertical. And I'll 
be an instance and move it to constraints. So let's go ahead and uh, test everything and see if it's working. And you can see it appears that um, our reference lines are moving as intended. So it looks like our um, skeleton is working. So let's go ahead and work on constraining our annotation um, to our actual reference lines or uh, yes, reference lines that we created. Um, to do this, you may have to create some additional geometry for your symbology um, to easily snap to your um, reference lines created by the skeleton. And to do this, I will typically use um, just a regular line and an invisible line and just create some reference geometry that is um, easy for me to uh, snap to and align to. So depending on how your symbol is shaped, you may have to do this. I avoid using, um, if possible, using um, reference lines in the actual group because you'll have a, a conflict with your other reference lines and the dimensions and uh, I can show you that real quick um, if I was to use um, a reference line um, in my group um, so depending on, on how your skeleton is created um, you may run into some issues so if I try to constrain that you can see that I get this warning so let's control Z back and use um, an invisible line, which is behaving very similar to the reference line. Then if I create the group, give it a proper name. You can see that I bypass the warning. So in this instance, I am using just an invisible line. And then let's go ahead and flex our skeleton just to make sure um, that everything is working. So our annotation moved. So it appears that everything is moving um, how we want it. So the rest of the magic's going to happen with our formulas and parameters. So um, before we can start creating the um, parameters, we have to create a couple, um, or excuse me, before we start creating the formulas, we need a couple additional parameters. And the parameters I'm making now are the actual user parameters. The, these will contain the values, the true value that a user would input. And I'm gonna keep these under dimension so they're separated from where I'm gonna put the parameters just so you can have that clear graphical um, separation. So we have one for the vertical. Let's go ahead and create another one for the horizontal. Then I'm going to create an additional parameter, and this is going to be an integer value, and I'm going to call it scale factor. And what this is, is um, a scale factor that I'm going to put into the formulas that matches the typical annotation scale for drawings in the United States. So it's uh, the most common scale um, used in the United States for architectural and MEP drawings is uh, one eighth of an inch, which is a scale value of 96. So that's the value I'm going to put in here. And you'll see how that's going to work in the project environment. So 
so we'll put 96. Then we're going to add a value here just to make sure our formulas are working. So let's go ahead and start with the formulas. And the first one is pretty simple. We're just going to take the user applied vertical offset. And we're just going to divide that by our scale factor. And you can see we come up one eighth inch, which is expected for a one foot uh, user input value. Um, the next value we'll do is a little bit more complicated. And this is where the magic happens so that we can have um, infinite negative value that we can input instead of being constrained to a pre-established defined value. Um, so basically it's an if statement. If the horizontal offset value is less than um, zero, we're just going to take the horizontal offset value, times it by negative one, divide by the scale factor. And if not, it'll just be a zero value if it's over, um, if it's a positive value. And then for our horizontal offset, we will apply a formula of the horizontal offset divided by scale factor plus the negative. Um, so you can see that we have um, an eighth inch, eighth inch. And let's go ahead and change this and see if we get the expected one quarter. And we do. So let's see what this looks like in our actual family. So you can see that we have a even horizontal and vertical offset. Um, and then if we apply a negative value here, we are now uh, going in the negative value on the horizontal plane. And I am not constricted or limited by a predefined limitation. Um, I can put any value here. So this is a good method to um, avoid errors or the family breaking because a user um, inputs a value that goes beyond the pre-established value, which is a lot of the methods I've seen when creating um, offset parameters for the uh, symbol. A lot of people have a pre-established negative value and they have it, you know, really far out, but occasionally a user may type in or have to, you know, go beyond that, but the family won't let them or you'll get a warning message. So by creating this uh, formula like this, you know, you will never come into um, that issue. Okay, let's go ahead and zero everything out and make sure that it lands at the center of the horizontal vertical reference planes. And as expected, it does. And one mistake I see here is I need to make the scale factor into an instance parameter. So we have our uh, skeleton created and we have our symbol um, constrained properly. So let's go ahead and load that into our electrical family. Then next, we need to uh, map our parameters. So within the project environment, we'll call this symbol. Symbol horizontal offset, and we'll make it instance. And to make it easy to find for this example, I'll just put it under other, so it's at the very bottom. And we'll do the same thing for the vertical offset. We'll call it symbol vertical offset. Again, instance and other. And then the scale factor.
And typically I will leave this as a type parameter, but it's up to you. You can make an instance parameter. Then we go ahead and load this into our project. So again, um, we're at a one eighth inch scale, which is typical for uh, architectural and MEP drawings in the United States. And you can see a scale value of 96. And that's where this scale value comes into play. So we're at a 96. So at the very bottom under other, we can test this out and specify a value. And because I am applying that 96 scale value, I know that it moved to the right one foot and up one foot. So you can see that um, our annotation is offset from our actual 3D device. And then for the horizontal offset, I can actually give it a negative value and I'm not limited to the value that I can input here to demonstrate that the 3D geometry is not moving we'll go ahead and make the annotation visible and fine and change our view to fine so we can see both the annotation and the 3D geometry so let's go ahead and zero everything out make sure that it's as to be expected in the center. So if we give a positive value, you can see that 3D geometry is maintaining its original location. So everything is working as expected. And that's how we do it here at Gemini BIM. Thank you for watching the video.